Yeah, there are no white Skittles besides the limited edition, but have you ever wondered about the secret behind Skittles' bright colors? Skittles just mean Skittles. Recently, a lawsuit in California has put this question into the limelight. Skittles found themselves in the middle of a controversy over an ingredient in their candies labeled as a known carcinogen. Can you guess this mysterious ingredient? It is called titanium dioxide, also known as E-171. Not Skittles. And that's why all Skittles are actually white underneath their color layer. Let me explain why you might want to know what you or your children are eating. You might be surprised to know that candies like Sour Patch Kids, Swedish Fish, and Nerds have chosen not to use this ingredient. But Skittles, with its trademark brightness, relies on titanium dioxide to make those vibrant colors pop. Justin Combs, the Vice President of Research and Development for Skittles maker Mars Wrigley North America, sent a statement to USA Today on Sunday. He said the company will not comment on the pending lawsuit, but that its use of titanium dioxide in all Mars Wrigley ingredients are safe and manufactured in compliance with strict quality and safety requirements established by food safety regulators in America, including the FDA. However, to your surprise, in 2016, Mars publicly shared their intention to remove E-171 from their candies in the coming future. Yet, titanium dioxide is still a part of the candy maker's products. But what exactly is the ingredient that's creating such a stir? Titanium dioxide isn't some rare, mysterious substance. In fact, it's all around us. This naturally occurring odorless white powder is the hero behind the stark white pigment in countless products. Some of these products include toothpaste, cosmetics, paint, and even medicines. Titanium dioxide is extracted from natural minerals like limonite ore or rutile bare deep in our earth. There are two methods to process titanium dioxide. The ore is treated with sulfuric acid, creating a mixture. After purification and the heating process, we get titanium dioxide. The second method involves processing the ore with chlorine gas, leading to the production of the main ingredient, Globally, millions of tons of it are produced every year. China, Europe, and North America lead the race in its production. While the process sounds interesting, the ultimate destination for this shiny substance might be more familiar than you think. The bright colors of our Skittles owe their origin to titanium dioxide. It's the reason behind many pastries and candies' bright appearance. Now, you might be wondering how that happens. In the culinary world, titanium dioxide goes by a fancier name, E-171. It is used in candies, chewing gums, and even dairy products like frosting to make them appear brighter and whiter. And here's where things get interesting. Those colorful Skittles you see aren't just rainbows on the outside. They also begin with a white base, all because of titanium dioxide. But as fascinating as this white agent is, there's a side to titanium dioxide that not everyone is aware of. When diving into Skittles creation, titanium dioxide acts as a foundational layer, providing that consistent white base, making every wonderful color pop vibrantly. It's interesting to note that while other candies might opt for natural bases, Skittles has chosen titanium dioxide as its ally in its goal of that signature brightness. But as we've explored, it's not without its controversies. In recent years, studies have begun to highlight potential health concerns associated with consuming titanium dioxide especially in its nanoparticle form. Some research suggests that these tiny particles might not be fully expelled from our bodies, leading to possible accumulation over time. Now, don't get us wrong. Titanium dioxide has its benefits. For instance, its application in sunscreens is praised for preventing harmful UV rays from entering our skin. But should it be sprinkled in our snacks? That's the million-dollar question. Recent studies have shown that exposure to titanium dioxide nanoparticles can cause inflammatory responses. While short-term inflammation is a natural response to harmful stimuli, chronic inflammation is a different story. Over time, it can cause wear and tear on the body's tissues and organs. Chronic inflammation has been linked to various health conditions, including heart disease, diabetes, and even certain cancers. There's growing evidence that it might have a direct impact on our digestive health, our gut is home to trillions of bacteria that play an important role in our overall health. Some studies suggest that titanium dioxide can disturb this delicate balance by reducing the number of beneficial bacteria and allowing harmful ones to thrive. This can lead to digestive issues like bloating, diarrhea, or even more severe conditions like irritable bowel syndrome. In the U.S., the FDA maintains that titanium dioxide poses no harm when used within guidelines. But not all food agencies agree. 
The European Food Safety Authority has raised alarms about E171's potential genotoxicity, suggesting that it might harm our DNA and even cause cancer. Additionally, some studies have linked titanium dioxide nanoparticles with inflammatory responses in the body, which can be a factor in chronic diseases. Despite the FDA's stance, it's worth mentioning that titanium dioxide is found in over 11,000 products, ranging from candies to salad dressings and even chewing gum. It's also used in dairy products like frosting to make it seem whiter, and each country seems to have its own perspective on its safety. For instance, while the US and Canada still permit its use, Europe has been more conservative. France banned it from foods in 2020, and the entire European Union followed suit in 2021. But the FDA stands clear. They claim that titanium dioxide is safe as long as it doesn't exceed 1% of the food's weight. They say they're always reviewing data to ensure safety. With Europe banning E171 and places like the US and Canada still allowing it, it raises the question, who's right? Let's spin the globe and take a look at different countries' perspectives on E171. It's no secret that regulations often differ from one region to another. In Asia, for instance, several countries still allow the use of titanium dioxide in food. Although with strict usage limits, their regulatory bodies claim that the occasional consumption poses no immediate threat. Yet, the Scientific Committee on Consumer Safety, after reviewing the available data, has shown concerns about the safety of titanium dioxide when used as a food additive. They said that it should no longer be regarded as safe for consumption. Such a declaration from a respected committee tells us the need for a more careful approach towards its use in the food industry. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is a part of the World Health Organization, has classified titanium dioxide as a possible human carcinogen. While this sounds alarming, you should know that the evidence primarily comes from animal studies. The experiment was conducted on lab rats who were made to breathe in titanium dioxide and, as a result, developed lung cancer. However, the focus of the debate is on the difference between regular titanium dioxide and its nanoparticle form. Nanoparticles are incredibly small, even smaller than our cells. This tiny size allows them to travel in our bodies differently than the larger parts of E171. The concern is that they might end up in places we don't want them to, kind of like that one character in every TV show who just won't leave the main character alone. Let's zoom out a bit. Beyond our plates, there's another side to this story. Titanium is energy hungry, which affects our environment. This not only strains natural habitats, but also consumes vast amounts of water and releases greenhouse gases. And the plot twist? When titanium dioxide takes a dip in water bodies, its light-loving nature can mess with the aquatic land, leading to some underwater trouble in marine life. That is like dropping a pop star in a quiet town. Immediate chaos. Because of these health concerns, many brands have started using rice starch or calcium carbonate to do the white magic. These alternatives, being more natural, are often praised for their safety profile. But guess what? they do not provide the same level of brightness or consistency as titanium dioxide, which is why many industries still favor the E171. Let's lighten things up a bit with a fun fact. Titanium dioxide isn't just found in food and sunscreen, you'll also find it in toothpaste, giving it the perfect white look and, in certain cosmetics, offering shimmer and glow on your face. Think of it as nature's Instagram filter, but did you ever think that the same shimmer behind your toothpaste could also play a role in the colorful Skittles your kids enjoy so much? Do you want to know how to avoid E171? You should start checking the ingredients on the packaging. However, you should know that the FDA does not require food industries to list E171 as a separate ingredient. It may just be labeled as an artificial color or food coloring. But the best approach is to avoid processed foods. Besides E171, Processed foods can have added sugars, salts, and unhealthy fats, which may lead to health issues such as obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and cholesterol-related problems. And do you still use Teflon pans to fry your food? Check out our video on how Teflon affects your health. If you want us to produce more content like this, don't forget to press like and subscribe.